Arrow Marsh in northern France is the site of an historic marine construction breakthrough. Today, Dr. Rhys Morgan is joining a team of divers who are tracking down an engineering relic. This coastline is the site of some of the most incredible Second World War engineering, and we're on the hunt for perhaps its most ingenious component. Lurking in the depths since the 1940s lies a game-changing innovation that influenced countless future engineers, like the team at London Array. Oh, does that look like it? Yeah, there's a structure there, is that right? Yeah, I think you can definitely see it coming up from here to the screen. During 1944, the D-Day landings gave the Allies a toehold in Europe. But this was just the beginning. To free the Nazi-occupied continent, they faced the problem of landing enormous quantities of equipment on the Normandy coast. To take on the mighty German army, hundreds of thousands of troops and their vehicles had to be landed on the beaches behind me. British engineer Sir Bruce Gordon White had to carry out an astonishing plan. Construct two fully functioning harbours in a matter of two days. And it would have been impossible without a brilliantly simple piece of engineering called a spud leg. actually found one of the original spud legs on the seabed. It's incredible to think that these now discarded pieces of metal were once vital for ending a terrible war. The spud legs were the vital component that made Sir Bruce Gordon White's famous Mulberry Harbours possible. These big concrete blocks behind me were floating pontoons on which a steel roadway led out from the beach to the deeper water so that the ships could unload their tanks and they could drive right onto the beach. Creating a floating pier is one thing, but anchoring it securely in tidal waters and making sure it's stable enough to carry a tank is a whole other ball game. The engineers building the London Array need a solid, stable platform to work from. Gordon White needed similar in order to safely land trucks and tanks. This simple platform illustrates the problem. In normal conditions, it's fine, but if you've got rough seas, then actually it's very unstable. It will swing violently from side to side, potentially damaging the roadway. So it needs to be anchored. Now the problem is, if you have a fixed anchor, as the tide comes up, the platform itself starts to sink. Surviving the seas required a special solution. And the answer was movable mechanical legs, which allow the pontoon to go up and down. These four legs help the platform remain stable. They weren't driven into the ground, but rather the ends just sat on the surface of the seabed. Now the weight of the platform, connected by these chains, is forcing the legs down, and that acts as an anchor. Not only did the legs prevent the platform moving from side to side, but the tension in the cable could also be adjusted to rise and lower with the height of the tide. Just a brilliant idea. Thanks to inventive engineering, over two million men were landed alongside 500,000 vehicles and four million tons of goods. The remains of this remarkable invention may be hidden in these French waters, but it has inspired engineers around the world.